Come on in, y'all. Sunday school lessons starting right now. It is on and popping. Matthew 15, 1 through 9. Yeah, that's what I thought. 1 through 9, 1 through 9, 1 through 9. Treat your parents justly. Mm -hmm. That is the title for today. Okay, come on in. Get ready to start this off. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hello, everybody. So was. <clears throat> mm -hmm, that's me. So was the Soul of the Show Show. I'm here. It is Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Theology Thursday is the day we sit around the mic and talk about the Bible. O to B I B L E. That is the book for me. I'm just so excited and uh, and excited again uh, that uh, we are doing these Sunday school lessons. It has been helping Minte out there. Hundreds have come to us and told us, "Thank you." May I have another? So we continue every Thursday. And for those of you who are uh, sending financial support, we would like to thank you, myself and Elder Rodney Jones, and those of you who are on YouTube, thank you for your financial support. And what it does is it helps us to continue these studies and you know, uh, puts gas in the car, <laughs> helps us to update our, 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 our machines and our technology and things like that. So it goes to something of use. So for those of you who don't know how to give, go ahead and go to paypal.me forward slash Sir Walter. And there it is, the link on YouTube, and go ahead and continue to support them. We thank you for that. As y'all know, we've never, I never, we never ask for that. But for those of you who do give, we thank you so much for your support. We uh, don't take that lightly. Uh, treat your parents justly is the lesson for today. Matthew 15, 1 through 9, uh, the Bible truth is the Pharisees confronted Jesus on a question of ritual observance, and Jesus challenged them to do what is truly fair and just. Jesus continued to teach these guys this lesson. Oh, man, this should be, y'all should be saying ouch out there because it's so apropos uh, and relevant to how the church is acting in today through some of y'all's rituals. Matthew chapter 15 uh, starts off with uh, verse 1. Then came to, to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do these disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, and Jesus quotes from the from the scriptures, honor thy father and mother, and he hath cursed father or mother, let him die the death. Uh, but ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God uh, of uh, none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, is the word that Jesus liked to use. Well, uh, did Esaias prophesy of you, saying, when Eli Elijah prophesied this, Isaiah prophesied this, uh, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Uh, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. So familiar, all right? So we want y'all to come and chime in on this lesson here because, again, it is so familiar and it is something that uh, all of us can identify with. But uh, I used to think, Elder Jones, that mm -hmm. when the Pharisees told Jesus that these disciples were not washing their hands, that they pretty much were saying their hands were dirty, and you don't eat and not <laughs> you don't eat and not wash your hands first. Right. But that's not really what they were saying. No, they pretty much was talking about the the, the Jewish ritual the Jew, yeah. of ceremonial right. washing and not just washing because you're dirty. Right. You know that's that's what we as English readers and the Western culture, we read a lot of King James and not understand how to interpret it because we try to interpret it by our own knowledge and culture. Exactly. 
So what is that true? Is is it was more of a they were trying to, and do you think they were again trying to trick Jesus up? Yeah, they were trying to trick Jesus because later when Jesus didn't wash his hands when he got ready to eat as well. He sure didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And so at, like this, like a teacher, like student. Like teacher, like student. <laughs> that makes yeah, sense. He didn't. He didn't wash his hands. Of course, he's still and because uh, it's. It's a thing of, of prejudiceism, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why, and just remind me why I say prejudiceism. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not never, it never was a thing of hygiene right. with the Jews. Sure, it was a thing of tradition, and that's why Jesus in this particular lesson. Now, notice what Jesus said: mm -hmm. "Why do ye also?" Mm -hmm. Which means he agreed that the disciples did break the traditions of. The elders. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, maybe you can explain to us who these elders, did they come through first jurisdiction? <laughs> what, who was the presiding bishop and all of that? Or Because, you know, everything, every time we see elder, it has nothing to do with the church right. per se. But right. 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 these particular elders were the seniors. Mm -hmm. These were the ancestors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and remind me to uh, kind of go into detail of what was this tradition and where this particular tradition came from? What was the tradition <clears throat> and where did the tradition come from? I, I think, Elder Jones, also it's important that when we read the scriptures, we see words that pop up in Old Testament and New Testament, mm -hmm. same word, mm -hmm. which, again, trips us up on how to interpret scripture because Good. we look at that word meaning the same thing right. throughout the 66 books, right. and they do not. Mm -hmm. For the, for instance, for the word prophecy or right. prophesy, we see that, yes. but there's different meanings yes, to it. Sir, and, that, and that's where <clears throat> uh, Acts two has messed up. A lot Acts two of has messed up a lot of people yes. because the word prophesy does mean to preach. It doesn't always mean to preach. Yes. So, and and I'm not throwing no hints, but a lot of our sisters or brothers who uh, throw that and say, "Well, God said that she was going to preach because the word prophesy means to preach." You cannot determine mm -hmm. where that definition goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Scripture has to determine it. Yes. And research has to determine where to use that specific uh, definition. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the same Hebrew and Greek word for bless is the same one that means curse. Yeah. The same one. Same one. But you can't determine when it means curse mm -hmm. or blessing. Mm -hmm. Scripture has to determine it means blessing here but cursing here. Yeah. Blessing or cursing here. I think it's the same as the last week's lesson on the wheat and tear. Correct. They both look alike. They both look alike. Until harvest time when one is, is up right and the other one just kind of bowed down a little bit. Right. <laughs> okay. Look at, the, look at the term, the title, pastor in Old Testament. Right. It says, I give you pastors after my own heart. That actually means ruler. Rulers. All right. Or shepherds. Yeah. Okay. And so this particular pastor or ruler seemed to be a little different, though, as the pastor of the New Testament as it pertains to um, his authority yes, and a lot of stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, because is today's pastor a ruler in the sense of Old Testament? I, 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 have, a, I have a major issue mm -hmm. with the prophets mm -hmm. and with the pastors. Today's. Today's prophet and pastors. Mm -hmm. Because the Old Testament, when we went into the New Testament and when Christ rose from the grave, mm -hmm. and when the Bible said that the, 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 the veil was rent from top to bottom, mm -hmm. meaning the entrance to the Holy of Holies was now, uh, uh, the, sep the thing that separated it was now removed. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says, come before him bold boldly. Okay? Boldly we can come before the Lord. Which means we don't need a go-between. Right. The purpose, one of the purposes of the particular pastors and the prophets, they were go-betweens. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who relayed the message that God gave the people. Now that God broke that wall down, every man can come to him. Right. Which means the position of pastor and the position of of profit changed as well. Sure did. Passing position, yes. So it's not like, you know, where he says he won't do nothing except he revealed it to his prophet and you know, all that good, beautiful stuff in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. 
all that stuff has changed. Mm -hmm. Because remember, he got the prophets. And I know that there's some going to disagree with me, but that's okay. He's got, he had prophets. The Bible says in Hebrews 1 and 1, God, who at sundry times and diverse manners, mm -hmm. have spoken unto the fathers by the prophets. Mm -hmm. Or God, who at sundry times and diverse manners has spoken unto the fathers by the prophets, mm -hmm. hath in these last days spoken to us by his son. Mm -hmm. So right off the bat, you know that there had to be a shift in the prophet. Mm -hmm. He's not the same one that he was in the Old Testament. True. As a matter of fact, almost none of those positions or operations or functions that was in the Old Testament is in the New Testament yeah. because we don't have the priests, we don't have the high priests, we don't have Levites. I'm sorry, musicians, you all are not Levites. Because if you're a Levite, then we got to have priests, and if we have priests, then we got to have armor bearers. And if you're an armor bearer, because you're not an armor bearer, True. every man bears his own armor now, mm -hmm. and that's the armor of God. That's because he says, put on the whole armor of God. No, I can't put it on because you're my armor bearer. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, Ooh, I'm just saying. We sit to the wee wee. Mm. Yes, that's right. You're, you're not Levites in it because if you were, all the tithe would go to you. To you. That's right. <laughs> all of them go to you. That's right. And then you give a portion to your pastor. To pastor. Uh, but Abroni Scott says the tradition came up during a time when a lot of sects came out, came, came about. When the Pharisees came ab about, they made up more laws along mm -hmm. with the Mosaic law. I think we brought that up last week. Yeah. After Malachi, God was silent for 400 years. 400 years. And then all of a sudden we see this, this, this yeah. title, Pharisee, Pharisee Sadducee, Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin, okay. the, the Atonement. The Atonement. Not only did they come out with the Atonement yeah. and the Septuagint, mm -hmm. they came out with the Atonement and then they came out with a commentary. A commentary. For the Atonement. For the Atonement, yes. And it's called a specific name. Mm -hmm. In other words, they came out with their companion to the law of God. Yeah, yeah for a companionship. Yeah. <laughs> so God created the law, yeah, right? Yeah. Then they came out with a companion to the law, and it's called the Talmud. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it was so much until they had to come out with a commentary yeah. for it. Yes. <laughs> Wow. So they needed someone to interpret it all. So they came out with these Pharisees and these sad, you see, mm -hmm. and then these uh, scribes. Now, scribes are not new. No, they're not. Because Ezra, I believe, was a scribe. Yes, sir. The problem is, and, and I'll go there, the problem is, is this tradition of the elders. Notice you use the term elders. Mm -hmm. That's an Old Testament term. Yes, that's the tradition of the ancestors. Yes. Is what the uh, those boys were saying. These are the cloud of witnesses, these elders. Yeah, yeah they're dead. <laughs> They've been dead before they got ordained. Mm -hmm. So they were never ministers. True. So the problem is, it is said. Now, this is what Jewish history says, that when Moses came off the mount, that God gave him the Ten Commandments and mm -hmm. the laws, right? I yeah. think that's Exodus 20. Yes. It is said that God gave Moses two sets of laws, mm -hmm. a, a, a written set and a verbal set. Yes. So they're trying to say the verbal set Moses kept to himself. Mm -hmm. And then before he died, he passed it down because the word tradition means to pass down. Yes. He passed it down to, what's the name? They got Joshua. Joshua allegedly passed it to the, uh, who came after Joshua? The judges. Yes. And then the judges allegedly passed it to the, who came after the judges? Uh, well, the prophets. Well, the, well they, they had been there. Right. But they allegedly <clears throat> passed it from <throat> the judges to the prophets and sure. from the prophets on down. Kings. To the, yes. And so now uh, these Pharisees wrote them mm -hmm. during, I believe, that 400 year uh, silence of God. I believe that's when they actually took it and wrote it. Gotcha. And so that's where this was supposed to, have, and that's why it was supposed to have been as authentic as the written word, because God was supposed to, like Joseph Smith. Sorry, Joseph. He said that God, that Jesus gave him all these tablets and all this information, showed him where it was, and, and, and he dug it up, and they came out with the Book of the Mormons. Sure. I'm, I'm, you know, come on. You know, I know God said I would do a new thing, but just some things that God that's, ain't in that. That's too new. Yeah, like like that said, devil come out of that. Come out of that devil. So yeah. that's where these traditions of the elders were supposed to have come, come from. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The elders had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tried to stop. <clears throat> Don't say it. Jones. Don't say it. Don't do it. Uh, L. Jones uh, verse five brings up an strange word. Mm -hmm. 
But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whosoever thou mightest be profited by me. Or whatsoever. Okay, I said that wrong, but yeah. semicolon. Yeah. This is a, uh, Matthew, I mean, Mark picked that up. Mark picked it up. With a word. What he called the word Corbin. All right. Funeral. Uh -huh. Yeah, Corbin funeral. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, I think it was Matthew 7 and 11. Yeah. I like going to that story. Yeah, and and good yeah. call. Yeah. But you say, if a man shall say to his, fa his father or mother, it is Corban, mm -hmm. that is to say a gift. Yes. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. Mm -hmm. There's something going on here. Now, notice, yo, he shall be free. Mm -hmm. uh, is it in Italian? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So that means your free. writer. That, that that means your King James translator wrote that in there. Shall be free is at yeah. Okay, so yes. that's not in the original. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I just thought that that was free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now sometimes italicized means it's a quote from someone. That would be parenthesis. Well, or that, that would be italic. That would be italicized as well. When usually when when Jesus is, matter of fact, when you look at today's lesson, when he's quoting from the Torah. Mm -hmm. The words in King James are italicized. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to check into that. Abroad, yeah. check that for me, please. Yeah, yeah. But then there's some words that are italicized. Uh, now, here's the funny thing, but here's a tricky thing, I think. Okay. When you go into the teaching of the, the working of the Holy Spirit by Paul mm -hmm. in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 12, I think it's off yeah. 14. 14, yeah. He's, he uses the word unknown. Yes. Which is italicized uh -huh. in black. Okay. That word was added mm -hmm. later because it's italicized. Very good. All right. Mm -hmm. Jesus is talking, so they put his words in red. Yeah. And when he quotes them, someone is red italicized. You see what I'm saying? Because he's talking. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying when Paul, somebody, said it again about the yeah. red italicized. Yeah. When it's, when, it's, when it's red, it's always Jesus. It's Jesus. Correct. Okay. Uh, and so if a, if another man is talking and he's quoting someone, mm -hmm. it's not red, it's just mm -hmm. italicized. Right. Okay. okay. Right. But um, the unknown mm -hmm. of Paul is uh, italics. Italics. And it was added because of the studies that we've been doing on that. Uh -huh. And a couple of words we, we see pop up is, was added as well. Mm -hmm. But Jesus here is pretty much quoting from. The, the Septuagint. Yeah, the Septuagint. Uh huh. Because these are italics. Look at verse 4. I will when my. I oh, your thing right. comes up. Yeah. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. All that's italicized. Uh huh. Okay. Sometimes the word is a, has an asterisk in front of it. Yeah, that's in that. scripture. That's that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and yeah. I think it's all, and, and I'm glad to say that because mm -hmm. In front of your Bible. Yes. Your particular Bible will tell you what these yes. particular things mean. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So now we need to go to say we need to explain this, okay? <clears throat> Turn this around so, I, so that they can see my beautiful yeah, smile. Beautiful smile. Beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> there is this seems like there is this teaching that Jesus has given to the Pharisees about how dare you judge this my disciples. Mm -hmm. But you dishonor the commandment when you do this to your parents. Mm -hmm. When you do what to your parents? What is it that they're doing to dishonor their parents? Mm -hmm. And why this word uh, that uh, pop up? I wonder why Matthew didn't use the word, but uh, Mark did. Yeah. Oh, right. That Mark is writing to a non-Jewish audience. Ah. So Mark has to explain it. So he has to write it in such a way where his readers can understand. Mm -hmm. Matthew doesn't have to do that because Matthew is already writing ah. to Jewish uh, listeners. Yes, sir. So they, he can mention, uh, uh, you broke the fifth commandment. Mm -hmm. Boom, they understand they what can. it is. Yeah. Mark will have to say, you broke the fifth commandment, which says, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's why the two of them, that's why they go that particular route. Good stuff. And that's why if you look at Mark 7, where Mark explained and said for the Jews, uh -huh. wash oft. Uh -huh. If you read uh, the seventh chapter of, 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 of Mark, Mark uh -huh. yes, yes. yeah, read it, and he'll say the Jews often wash. Uh -huh. And uh, matter of fact, I got that uh, down here somewhere as well. 
that would be Mark 7, 3 and, through and 4, says, For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and other tables. And so notice, Matt, Mark goes into de detail because Matthew already knows, his audience knows this. And so something else that, Matt, that Mark says, uh, he says that the Jews came or the Pharisees came to Jesus to find fault with the disciples right off the bat. So what then Jesus is referring to is because they call, they holler Corbin or they say it is a gift. Because, and to me, this is very important, and hopefully if, if time will allow us to talk about the difference between honor and obeying your parent, and at what age do you don't have to honor or uh, obey your parent? Lucia! Mm, what you say now? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Lucia's home? Lucia. Uh, so, uh, he, uh, one of the practices of these particular Jews, and especially the Pharisees, because of their tradition... Because God said that they were to honor their father and mother. Never read where he says, honor your father or your mother. And you never read where he says, honor your father mm -hmm. or honor your mother. Basically, you always read. So far that I've read, he always had both of them in there. Yeah, I wonder Re why. Yeah, regardless of what takes place in life, it is a duty and it is a command of God to honor your father and your mother, and throughout scripture, God has already said that. Then he says, if you do that, then you're going to have longevity of life. Mm -hmm. And it was, according to Ephesians, the first command with promise. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that? Mm -hmm. So this is the fifth commandment, and we'll probably get into that. But the Jews made up a law where, and if you read in a lesson, the Bible says that if a man vows a vow to the Lord, he has to pay that vow. Mm -hmm. Well, if your mother is in need of some money from you to support herself, you can holler Corbin or this is a gift, which means this money that you're asking me for, I'm now dedicating it to God. Mm -hmm. Now, I just made a vow to God, which means my parents cannot touch this and I cannot give it to nobody but God. Mm -hmm. So they call it a gift or they use the word Corbin. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is, and Jesus knew this, they were never giving it to the temple. Mm -hmm. And so that was the problem. And all they were trying to do is to relieve themselves from taking care of their mother and their father. Mm -hmm. And God said that you, need, you will die the death, is what he said. Yeah. When you get to when you refuse, not can't, but refuse to honor your father and your mother, he said, not only is your days going to be short, but you need to go ahead and die to death. Lord, have mercy. When you curse your father and your mother, that's when you need to go ahead and die. And we got scripture for that as well. Man, this is, <clears throat> that's, that reminds me of the, the whole shoe bread uh, table. table of shoe bread story. Mm -hmm. Because it seems like these lessons in, in um, each week is talking about humanity first. Mm-hmm. Almost above the law. Yeah, yeah. Humanity first. Uh, I think uh, in uh, the law of man is uh, there was an episode of on uh, Sanford and Son where Lamont broke the law mm -hmm. of traffic issue. He was, uh, he broke the law, and the, the, the man gave him a ticket. Mm -hmm. He was and he couldn't pay for the ticket. He says, "I I gotta go to court. I can't pay for this ticket." And he told the judge, "Listen." I swerve because there was a man that was getting ready to hit, mm -hmm. but swerving broke the law because I'm not supposed to make a left turn. Mm -hmm. But breaking that law saved this man. Right, exactly. And the judge says, "Case dismissed." Case dismissed. Yes. Uh -huh. And you always clap. And I'm a little boy. And I says, "Wow." Yeah. Now that's something. Yes, sir. <clears throat> that's something. <clears throat> he broke the law but saved a life. To save a life. Yeah. Now, it seemed like these rituals, though, uh, and I think, again, we, I keep going back here. We keep trying to take care of a, of a ritual or tradition of our tradition, church right. at the harm of, of people. people. All right. Yeah. David sinned with Bathsheba. Yes, he did. They committed an adulterated act. Right. 
but they still did a ceremonial wash afterwards. Yes, they did. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. All right. They said they didn't want to break the mold laws. Okay. Now yeah. they're worthy of death. Yeah. Because he, you know, he got, he was supposed to die. He's supposed to die. But they both of them were supposed, both to, be supposed to be stoned. Because she didn't hunt. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I but, guess she did. Uh, okay, but yet they mm-hmm. washed. They washed. So not because they were dirty and they right. didn't need, but, but because, because of the ceremony. Of the ceremony. Yeah. They did the ceremony. And he just wiped his and he went back to on the on the throne like nothing was wrong. And Jesus' is accusers, mm-hmm. yes. the Bible said they refused to into the courthouse yes. where what that man was, Pontius Pilate was. Yes. So that they won't defile themselves. Ah. Yet they paid people to say that Jesus was guilty of death. Oh boy. But they refused to go in there yes. because they didn't want to defile themselves. But you get better to have a man killed. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, this is what's happening in churches. This is the same thing of the t- tradition of man. I yes. see it in politics as yes. well. I keep seeing it with Donald Trump in North Korea. Right. I, I see it. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I went to a mosque one one day years ago and went in there with a friend of mine. And when they walk in there, they take off their shoes. Yeah. And they have to go to the restroom and do a ceremony wash before yeah. service. Right. They have to wash their hands. They even have a ceremonial pee. Mm. When they go to use the restroom, mm-hmm. and I, because I would go to the restroom sometimes. Um, my boss, he was an uh, Indian, mm-hmm. all right. So you know they were they were Muslim, yeah. All right. So we in a restaurant wherever we are, we'd go to the restroom, and I notice mm-hmm. he three tinkles, flush, tinkles, wash, yeah, three tinkles, three mm-hmm. tinkles. I, as funny as that is, that's the way he peed. Yeah. I, when he first did it, I thought hey, he he's got some backed up right. uh, plumbing <laughs> problem. Right, right. He got some plumbing yeah. issues. <laughs> And then, but every time if I was, if I ever was in the restroom with him, mm-hmm. he spent a long time at the urinal. Mm-hmm. It was a ceremonial pee. Yeah. Everything they did was ceremonial. Everything we do is ceremonial. Everything we do and is ceremonial. And the problem is, he gave us ceremonies. Do we the only thing he gave us was the Lord's Supper, mm-hmm. uh, feet washing, and uh, water baptism. These are ordinances. Those are ordinances of the church, but yeah. they're only really, they perform ceremonially. Mm-hmm. They do have a 100% meaning and support behind it. Yeah. But how many of us eat, but we pray before we eat? True. And many times, you just saying some words because the sinners say grace. They really do. Before they eat. Most of it is ceremonially. How do you know that? Because the heart is not in it. Because many of them do it out of superstition. Superstition. Reason. Exactly. Because they're the same ones that won't allow a black cat to cross them. Correct. Go behind under a ladder. So the word tradition means the transmission of customs or beliefs from generation to generation. Yes. Or the fact of being passed on in this way. A tradition. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I reference this word. It means a doctrine believed to have divine authority, though not in scriptures. Mm. It's believed to have authority, but it ain't in the scriptures. Yeah. And that's tradition. And that's where it fits in this particular lesson. It does perfectly. The word tradition. Yeah. It's a passing down of information, customs, rituals, practices, and all that kind of stuff. And that's what we have done. We use the church as a tradition of passing down. Okay, my father is the pastor. He dies. Now I need to be the pastor. And so when, when I die, my son needs to be the pastor. No, that's dynasty. That's how God handled the kings. That's, true. that's a natural thing. But that's not how he handles the church no. and his business. Right. He places up who he wants to be the pastor or he takes down who he don't want to be the pastor. That's how he does it. Right. But we use tradition. And we use man-made stuff, and what happens is we go against God. I asked a question on my video a while back. At what point do we pray for people that's sick at church? Traditionally, we wait till the end of the sermon. Very end. And if somebody come up and say, I need prayer, what do we normally do? It's just, okay, just, I got, let me finish this message first, and then we'll get to you. Mm-hmm. That's tradition. Right. It's not God moved. And this is where Jesus, now look at where these Pharisees came from. Now, normally it would be the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but this time it was the Pharisees and the scribes. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the two individuals who are supposed to know the law because the scribes were the ones 
who who uh, make sure that it was written properly. Yeah. Because a scribe is one who writes. So that's why a lot of the scribes became leaders because they know the word. They wrote it enough times. Now they come from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That's the head church. Yeah. Now I believe Jesus is somewhere in uh, Galilee or wherever, which means there's at least 70 miles they travel. Yes, sir. And they didn't travel to be healed. They didn't travel to spread no good news. They didn't travel to give no gifts. They didn't travel to get no fish. They didn't travel to see no miracles. They just traveled to find fault. That's a long way to go to find fault in a person. Mm -hmm. For what? Mm -hmm. What is your purpose at doing it? So uh, I mentioned earlier that Jesus was... Uh, in Luke 11, 37, the Bible said that Jesus uh, was invited by a Pharisee to go into his house. Then it says the Pharisee saw that Jesus didn't wash his hands yeah. before he ate. Jesus called the man a fool. <laughs> Luke eleven thirty nine 39 says, Then the Lord said to him, You Pharisees are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and wickedness. Then he says, verse 40, Luke 11 and 40, fools, <laughs> don't God, uh, didn't God make the inside as well as the outside? Mm -mm -mm. He says, so clean the inside by giving gifts to the poor and you will be clean all Ooh, over. Oh, Jesus. That's what he said to the Pharisee and the one who invited him in his house. Ooh, what, a, what a slap in the face. Oh, you just, and you know, you just insulted the host. You're supposed yeah. to die or get yeah. kicked out. Yeah. Well, your man. food's supposed to be poison. I think then he says, <laughs> then he says something to the fact that it is not that goes in the man that defiles him, right? But, but that, that goes was, yes, out sir. and enters into the drought, um, the droth. I think that's the, the word. Uh -huh. the, the toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Lake Michigan. Lake 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 Michigan. That, that was a point. That was a that was a point I was going to make. Oh, your services, L. Jones. Yes, sir. So people got to sit in your church service sick. Uh -huh. In your service for at least two hours. At least. Before you call for the sick. For the sick. So yeah. all, all these sick people are there. Yeah. And one reason why they're trying to get a breakthrough and they all stop the praise right. is because they, 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 maybe they're, they're sick. sick. Right. They don't feel good. <laughs> they're, they're trying they're to. They're oppressed. They're oppressed. Mm -hmm. And you, you kind of want people to listen mm -hmm. to the sermon. Right. Well, don't you want them to listen to you while they're well? Yes. All right. So I think we may need to re-examine our church services because as soon as people come to the service, the first thing we should be doing is, is there anyone sick in here? Yeah. I and think if, we should do that. If you got a discerning spirit. You should know. Then you should already know who's sick. Y'all call the place the hospital. Y'all keep doing that. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a there's a place down in the basement where the, the dead bodies lie in the hospital. Yeah. Okay, so y'all church has got some dead people yeah, in the it's basement. Quiet. It's called right. the choir department. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. So I just don't know no doctor. Mm -hmm. When you come there, he's got to give you a, a lecturer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the schematics of the body. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you see him, his first question is, What's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah. What can I do for you? Yeah. You say it hurts when I do this. Right. And he, he says, you, don't do that. Don't do that. See my secretary. See the financial administrator. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Right. All right. And that's something. But yeah, we call ourselves the, the, the hospital. Yeah. Ah, I don't know. Lady Trust says, thank you, men of God, for your consistent teaching as breaking down the word of God with passion and, and ooh, passion and compassion. Yeah, well, There's two of them. Man, well, we are brothers. While holding us accountable for moving from milk to meat. meat yeah, it's, it's meat time. It's meat time. Let's get some meat right quick. Look at this tradition of men. Mm -hmm. There's a, a misunderstanding of scripture. Let's go to Colossians, right? Since we're dealing with tradition. Colossians 2 and 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. That's the key thing that we're doing in this day and time, philosophizing everything. We philosophize the gospel of Jesus Christ. His gospel is not to be philosophized. Philosophy. It's not to be a seven-point sermon. His gospel is to be preached. Yes, sir. All right? So men and women can be free, and so devils can be off the people and loose, is what I'm saying. Give us free. Yes, yeah, give us. We want to be free. <laughs> so beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, because that's what we teach a lot, mm -hmm. the traditions of men. Mm -hmm. We tell people that you must take care of your pastor. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, leave that and long. after the ruminants of the world and not after Christ. Yes, sir. Mm. Colossians 2, 
verse 2, 20 through 22 is for all the people who said the Bible says, touch not, taste not, handle not. When you look at it, it says, wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why? As though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Verse 21, touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all the parents with the using after the rumors and doctrines of men. There's a question mark at verse 22. Oh. So the Bible never said touch not, taste not, yep. handle not. Yep. It asked a question, question. Why are ye subject to these rules? Ooh, what yeah. makes you think that you are now unclean because mm. you touched a dead body? Ooh. So the Pharisees, Ooh. when they went to the market, they felt like when they touched a, a non-Jew, yeah. They were unclean. That's true. So when they went home, they washed themselves, they not for hygienic no, per sir. se, but for prejudiceism, mm -hmm. because they felt like they touched an unclean person. Mm -hmm. And we do that a lot when that drunk be on the outside of our church or that prostitute is standing there, the drug abuser standing there bent down. We don't want to put our hands on them because we're clean on our way to church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did I say something right or did uh, I say something wrong? And so we, we feel the need to go in our pocket and get our hand sanitizer mm -hmm. because I just touched something unclean. Yeah. But God says, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Oh, man, man. But he came down and touched you. Ooh. We sing the song, he touched me, yeah. but yet did he put hand sanitizers on him? He probably did. <laughs> <laughs> he probably did. I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> Jesus passed me the, <laughs> the zest. Yeah. yeah, we was at a restaurant, Il Jones. Uh -huh. The waiter, the waiter was a uh, apparent, obvious gay man. Yo, yes. Okay, yes. he was a gay man. Yes. The Christians he's at the, happy. Yeah, he's very extremely happy. Yes. The Christians at the table, mm -hmm. though, they did not want him to serve at that table. Right. So they asked the management for another waiter. Mm. I was blown away by it. Yes, sir. So we don't want him to serve us. Okay. So you was upset when I asked for another waiter. When you me? asked another. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they they and this they gave them them another one. And I often say, you know, you might win the battle, yeah. but this, you lose yeah. the soul. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing. That the waiter, waitress or waiter that replaced the gay guy mm -hmm. could be in a worse situation. Yeah. Okay. So spiritually, the lifestyle. Yeah. You, who knows? Right. Okay. And we, that's where we are. We're just like these people that you just read. Yeah. They could have been uh, practicing witchcraft. They could have been witchcraft. Yeah. They, they could have been the one with the AIDS and the gay guy was not. Right. <laughs> yeah, he was just yeah. mad. He just, you know what I'm saying? He just excited. He could have been the victim. Man, it's amazing. At and that, that point. That was an opportunity to win. Right. And but but that's why the church is judged the way we are. Mm. Because of your brothers, sir. Yeah, I ain't <laughs> so but look look at what Jesus says. Yeah. He says to them, Yes, my disciples did transgress mm -hmm. the traditions of the elders. He says, But you transgress, and the word transgress means to go on the side of. In other words, you didn't walk the straight and narrow. You went on the side of. You refused to walk down the line with us. Mm. You, you're a spectator when it comes to God's law because you didn't obey his law. You walked on the side while everybody else was following his law. He says, you break the commandments of God with your tradition. Mm -hmm. And Sir Walter Jones Jr. Sr., <laughs> we, are, we are guilty even in this day and time. A lot of what we're teaching is not gospel, and that's why the people are not free. You can never be free outside of the gospel. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is not binding when the Spirit of the Lord is. There's, there's liberty. There is freedom. And what happens is we spend more time teaching the traditions of men. I don't teach traditions of men. I teach the gospel, mm -hmm. period, because God called me to teach the gospel. He didn't call me to defend the doctrine of the church of God in Christ. I love the church of God in Christ, but I was not called by God to defend the doctrine of the church of God in Christ. I was called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And in doing it, if I defend Coach's gospel, whatever doctrine, that's good. Sure. So in other words, what I'm saying is I don't dance to step on the devil's head. I dance to praise God. Yeah. Meanwhile, his head gets stepped on because it was in the way. Mm. 
change your operation. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Change your operation, change what you do, and you'll get a different effect by it. Change what you do. Change what you do. The, the book says change your trajectory. Ooh wee. Who was that? Father Jesus Hayes would say if you change your attitude. You change your something. You change your whole life. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, Lisa Johnson, Brother Jones. Hey, hey, my sister. Blessings to you, Lisa. Um, yeah, now this this is hitting home. Yeah. For it should hit home for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got we got to we got to pack this thing in the suitcase. Okay. Because okay. we I want y'all to travel with this wherever you go. Yes. Okay. Just don't ride Metro here in Chicago because they've oh, been please. they they slow and they uh, yeah. they've been packing folk in and, and just this a mess and they hit people too. Metro <laughs> like to run over folks. All right. So don't <laughs> the way to really fly is, yeah. could be the way to really die. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You're <laughs> okay. poor. You didn't yeah. I, I didn't know it. <clears throat> so L Jones. Yes, sir. Oh man! So who's gonna play the part of Jesus in this movie today? Uh, I'll be Jesus. You be Jesus? Yes, sir. Okay, because there seems to be a problem in our churches and our, 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 as it pertains to our tradition, mm -hmm. right? With this whole thing, what is some of the things that you think that uh, we sh we can change in church? I'm talking about um, worship Sunday, mm -hmm. and how can we better our services? Because I don't want to just do shows. <clears throat> on a lesson and not give a practical way of yeah. uh, you know fixing. Yeah. You know. Well, let's stick with let's stick with the. All right. Traditionally speaking, there is an order of worship, and I get it. That's good. Order, order is fine, but the key thing is order. In the the first thing of business is worship. The purpose of worship is designed. The purpose of the, us coming together is to worship God collectively as a body of Christ. Mm -hmm. If that be the case, when members come or people come, I think they should get more than just a preached word. They should receive an experience of worship wherever they go. Mm -hmm. Because when you experience a, an, a uh, when you have a, uh, an experience of worship, it takes place. It, it takes care of a whole lot of stuff. Have you ever been in worship and you saw God or you felt the presence of God and it changed your whole life? I mean, even questions that you had, God gave you the answers to your questions. He gave you the solutions to your problem and he healed your body all at the same time in five minutes. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, forget the prayer line. I just got healed. Right. Because who doesn't get healed when they're in the presence of God? And then I think we need to just kind of loosen up the focus so much because there's some churches who still will not allow women to wear certain garments in the church. True. Now, I understand respect and order in the church, but some of that is tradition. Yes. And be, for, for instance, uh, you know, there once was a time that uh, the women in our, some of our churches could not wear her toes out. That's true. And right now, it's taught as a sin. Yes. But Jesus and them didn't have, but all they had was sandals. That's all they had. So they had toes out from the, be <laughs> from, from the beginning. Because all they had was a pair of Goodyear. You see what I'm saying? And a strap. Yeah. Th that was it. And they were crusty because they were and all it, that sand. Do you, you know, see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all they had. So who came up with this tradition that the women had to have her toes in? Mm. And then we go from one extreme to the other. Now we've got the six and stilettos. I mean, and so so the dress code is one. Now I'm saying don't disrespect and dishonor God when you come into his house. Mm -hmm. But some of our church services need to be changed and God needs to be put back in it so that the people can have an experience with God. It's not about the preacher. It's not about the pastor. It's not about the evangelist. It's not about the leader. But it's about us coming together to worship God and to find out what it is that God wants wants us to do, yeah. period. Yeah, period. So, yes, the, laws. the laws uh, from Malachi to Matthew, mm -hmm. man decided to write up these laws to try and help God out. Yes, and he had a lot of them. He had a lot of help. I think that's what we did in our Pentecostal churches. Mm -hmm. We began to write up Laws. laws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that we do need some rules and regulations True. because man can go crazy. Oh, yeah. You go from one extreme to the other. Yes. So, but we began to write in laws saying that this is the law of God. Right. When really God didn't. He didn't, didn't say that. He or didn't that's say not that. what he meant. That's not what he meant. Or he didn't say that. You put that law on there because Correct. you wanted to keep people in a certain position. Right. Now, um, 
the the help me out here. This is an issue with me. Okay. This could, I've, and I've heard you say this is an issue as well, and I get it. I mm-hmm. get why pastors have to curtail this portion of the service. For mm-hmm. instance, at the before the Word of God, the service gets what we call high. Hot. Yeah. Yeah. The people want to shout. Right. They want to proclaim. Yes. All right. They want to proclaim. They want to go boogie boogie boogie. Yes. Uh huh. If you look at the pastor, whoever was the lead, the head of that particular congregation. Yeah, he's in the pulpit sleep. Go he's, yeah, he usually is. Or he's in the office. Office, uh-huh. right? Okay. And, and then he'll send a word out there. Don't y'all shout because if right. you shout, you're going to get too tired. Right. And you're going to sleep. You're going to be asleep during my sermon. My sermon. And I got at least seven points. I got seven points. And three calls. All right. All right. So here's the mixed emotion I have. Uh-huh. He's not all the way... Incorrect. Uh-huh. They will get tired. Yes. They will get tired. Mm-hmm. Uh, do he have to preach that particular day? Mm-hmm. Yes and no. Okay, all right. Because yeah. I have to bring because this you to have, you. You're going to have a mixed crop. All right, you are. All right. Mm-hmm. So I've seen it where the preacher didn't preach. Right. He just let the people go forth that day because he realized I that fed them. Sometimes they need this. They need this. I fed them last week. Right. I'm going to feed them next week. Correct. We got Bible study Tuesday. Right. So they're going to get the word in. And they'll say it a hole. Until it a hole, all right? Uh-huh. And you should be getting the word at home anyway. Correct. But because you got a mixed audience, like you said, yes. there's about five people there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Three of them is mixed. Three of them mixed, okay, who need this word. So... We'll give them this word. Mm-hmm. All right. So he stops the people from receiving or the, uh, uh, they, they, they exuberant. Yeah. He cut off their praise. He cut off their praises uh-huh. so that he so could pump do, them back up when he gets up. So that he could do the pumping. Right. See, uh, see L. Jones, see, I'm, I'm oh, tossed yeah, here. You got, yeah. you got, I'm, he I'm puts the fire through. out, then he starts yeah, the And then fire. it starts to fire again. Cause, and cause then now he, he can control the fire. Ah, I see. I see. Uh-huh. It's, and it's like what Donald Trump did does with, with Obama's, all of Obama's initiatives Trump is trying, he's trying to erase them all. Yeah. And then so he could put in his and say, now I did this. Right. This, this thing he just had did over there in Singapore uh, with, with uh, the North Korean leader. Mm-hmm. His tweets yesterday was, we're a safe country now. <laughs> you don't have to worry about North Korea anymore. <laughs> His, he promised to denuclearize. So rest well tonight, <laughs> America. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank no, you. You're welcome. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, you because are. I'm the greatest <laughs> <laughs> there, there ever was. Because he used a lot of what they, the word superlatives. The superlatives. He, mm-hmm. he used everything is superimposed, okay? <laughs> All right? And that is the trick. That is a rope of dope. And, yeah. we, and to say to America, <laughs> re- so, go yeah. to sleep. There's no more Right. And the enemy is reading this. The enemy knows this, reads yes. this. And the Bible said, wild men slept. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. The enemy came in. The prophecy went forth says, the, what they said, safe, peace and safety. Said, peace and safety. Mm-hmm. Then, then sudden destruction shall then. come upon them. Yep. So he told America, go to sleep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Go to sleep. Yeah. That's how he got in the office when we were asleep. Y'all was asleep. Mm-hmm. Y'all with this dilemma that I'm having on Sunday yeah. morning services. Yeah. The, the key thing is, and I, I say this to every leader, what we call leaders, every leader should have, <laughs> I use that word leader very technically yeah. because we really don't understand what a leader is. No, no. Every believer is supposed to be a leader. They too. Because they're supposed to lead souls to Christ. Mm. Once you lead souls to Christ, you cease to be the leader. Christ is now the leader. Yeah. You, you, are you feeling what I'm saying? I feel you. So the mater D. When you come in, mm-hmm. what does the mater D do? Yeah. He takes you to your table. Yeah, he does. He done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. He ain't taking you nowhere else. That's true. Then the waiter goes from there. That's true. So the thing is, yes, we're leaders of the government, of the community and all that. But who are we leading people to? Mm. Or where are you leading me to? Mm. When you get me to Jesus, you're not my leader anymore. Mm. He is my leader. Mm. Mm. You're just an instructor. Mm. And, and uh, you please understand what I'm saying on that uh, because whew, whew, almost went there. So I believe every shepherd, because remember, <laughs> back to this again, he is an under shepherd. 
Yes, because yes. Jesus is the chief shepherd and the high priest and the high priest yes. giving assignments to the under shepherd. That's right. Right. Yeah. As an under shepherd, I believe every under shepherd, or every pastor should have a discerning spirit or spirit of discernment. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is in worship, it's the Holy Ghost that that who's over the services yeah. and everything should be operating according to the dictates of God. Period. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily man. I'm not knocking our order of worship. We need order. Mm -hmm. Everything should be. But he says, occupy till I come. Mm -hmm. He should come the first when we open the door because we brought him. Let, yeah. let me move on. Yeah. So the thing is, is yes, we got the mixed audience because everybody's not always going to be saved at the church. Mm -hmm. So the gospel needs to still be preached. Mm -hmm. All right. You got two audiences. You got one that's not saved and you got one that is saved. Mm -hmm. The message should be to encourage and inspire those that are already saved, but to convict those that are not mm -hmm. saved to be saved. Mm -hmm. And so everything Paul says, but we preach Christ and him crucified. Yes, sir. All right. And that's the purpose of our preaching is to encourage those who are already saved, but those who are not to give them a message of hope that they can come to Christ. And so, yes, those who have been rejoicing and dancing, sometimes the saints just need to flat out rejoice. Mm -hmm. Just let them go. Let them go. Matter of fact, Rev, get down there with them yeah. because the Bible said rejoice with them yes. that do rejoice. Yes, sir. When I see a person that, so, I, you know, I sit in the pulpit. I don't always want to sit in the pulpit. You, you know, we have never really been pulpit sitters. Yes, right. I like to sit, when I minister, I like to go down there where the people are because I'm one of y'all. I don't want to be on the other side of the holy of holies. Right. Okay, that's God's side. Right. So there are times when I see a brother dancing, I get out the pulpit and go beside him and dance with him yes, or sir. grab some of the other brothers. Let's dance with him because my brother is getting a breakthrough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love working the altar and seeing people deliver. That's important. Come out your office, put that Bible down, and rejoice with the people because you're going to want them rejoicing with you when you get up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And like Dad said, when now that you've been asleep and now that you want to get up and want to bring fire from, from heaven, Dad says, I got to go pee now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't blame him. Right. So I think the, the order of service should be that the Holy Ghost leads and inspires us to go in the direction that he sees fit. And then the Holy Ghost will tell us, don't use the message that you studied last night. Yeah. Yeah. Open your mouth and speak this. Mm -hmm. And then when you speak what the Holy Ghost says to speak, the body of Christ is, is helped. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Ghost then will bring conviction to those who need conviction and consolation to those who need consolation, healing to those who need healing, all because you opened your mouth and spoke what the Holy Ghost said, spoke, and he did the work. Who's the church for? The saved or the unsaved? The church is for the saved. I see. Yes, because okay. it, the church is a body of uh -huh. baptized believers in Christ. Uh -huh. And so is the building. Yeah. The building is when the saved folk come. I'm going to yeah. be honest with you. Because we're supposed to go out into the world uh -huh. and preach the gospel I of Jesus see. Christ. I see. When they come in uh -huh. and join, mm -hmm. how are you going to join a building and you're not giving your hand to, and your heart to the Lord? Yes, that's why I asked that question. Yeah. And the synagogues, that's what the purpose of the synagogues uh -huh. were, were for. Yeah. I mean, why do you go to the grocery store? Yes. To just walk around and look? Ah. Uh. See. You go to the restaurant. There is a purpose for going to everywhere. The only place that there is no purpose is the church. Oh, man, you messed up. No, I'm going to go side. L. Jones? Yes, the boss. Rarely, now I'm not saying the word rarely, do you go to the courthouse mm -hmm. and see people sitting in there because they were bored and they just, <laughs> and they just wanted to see a court proceeding. <laughs> I mean, really. Really. Yeah. Okay. And if you do see somebody there, he's either a part of the court. Mm -hmm. Or you brought him with you. <laughs> you brought him with you. Right. Okay. He's going to see the judge. He's a, or he's a reporter, reporter, independent reporter. Right. Okay. Nobody say, hey, it's lunchtime. I'm going to go sit in this court. <laughs> right. Abronia, do you do that? Do you do that, Abronia Scott? <laughs> I got to get out of here, y'all. 
Uh, D. Curtis Reynolds coming on up uh, right now because uh, he's got some music he want to play to your young folks. Come on in the courts. Come on, bring the music in the courts. D. Curtis Reynolds, do the dance I just saw you do a few minutes ago. <laughs> I seen you do it. Mm -hmm. D. Curtis Reynolds, right now. Show off the drum show. <laughs> he cut that thing real. He ain't playing, boy. He cut that music, boy. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's that's the that's the problem here, y'all. That's why I asked the question: Is the church for believer, no, it's for the unbeliever? Because last I checked, you said that my house should be the house, house of God, of God uh, or of faith, or, 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 of, of prayer, uh, pray. house of prayer. Right. So right. sinners come there, they ain't come there. They ain't come there to pray. To pray or they spe spectate they or do they? They come to, to be entertained. They come there to be entertained. And that's something I tell yeah. you. So if, because we know they come in there, if either to spectate or entertain. We entertain. We entertain them. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And when you entertain mm -hmm. them, you they, were, they, they stay as they are. I say that one. And when they leave there, they don't leave the differently. They leave the same way because the church has been commercialized. It's, a, it's all about an entertainment. Uh -huh. They should leave there with a heart of conviction. Uh -huh. I heard one pastor said it, one preacher said it, and I really enjoyed it. He said, sometimes they're going to leave from hearing your word angry at you. Right. But they're going to get home, they're going to be tossing and turning yeah. because that word is now following them. Mm -hmm. That word is pricking their heart. Mm -hmm. That word refuses to let them sleep. Before you know it, they go ahead and surrender. All because you gave them the gospel message of Jesus Christ. We don't hardly preach about the, the cross, the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus and, and all of that. We have changed so much and we have compromised so much until that's why it, it, uh, people, we don't really have faith. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right. When you don't preach the word of God, the people can't get faith. When those who can't get faith, they don't have hope. They don't have nothing to hold on to, which means they have to come back every week to survive off of your vitamins. Off of your vitamins. Uh, what you give them. Vitamin, vitamin, that sunshine vitamin, vitamin D, by the way. Yeah. Uh, somebody sent me a, a video uh, during the gospel fest. Uh, they took the, some of the some of the people in the audience was on Michigan Avenue and they started playing the blood still work. I saw that. You saw, I saw my son in there too. Okay, now it was cute. Yeah, it was. I had a problem with the comment though. Yeah. Right, here's the problem. The person who I was talking to showed me the video and said, "See, we doing ministry." Mm. I said, "Okay." Uh, I said, "That's that's that's nice." I asked her the question, though. I says, did anyone, um, when they got through dancing out there, mm -hmm. did anybody talk to anybody out there? Probably. She said, no, that wasn't necessary because the seed was so. I, yeah, says, well, no. <laughs> I said, um, I said, see, that, that, this, is, this is difficult for me to ex express this to you because, you know, she was a she's dear friend of mine. And I don't want to discourage. You know, when we teach in lessons, sometimes we can discourage people. All right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I asked them, was there any evangelism going forth? Well, now when they left there, and maybe they might have went home, and, they, and the word gripped them. I said, well, not necessarily, see, because I never known any apostle in Scripture uh, used music to evangelize the right. sinner. Right. No one, I don't see it anywhere where they they sang a song and then and allow the song only right. to reach the world. Right. And they just went home, hey, so are uh, you going to preach? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. we, we sang a song and we, <laughs> and we allow it. We allow it, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, because, I, and I told her, the only way I see what Jesus even used music is when he was with the disciples at communion. Mm -hmm. And they sang a song and walked out. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's, part, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. But when he was talking to the unbeliever, he talked to them. Right. He didn't. Right. He didn't sing to them. Or, you know, <laughs> and nothing like that. I said. So oh you, you know what I'm saying. So I said. I, didn't, I don't want to discourage you. Right. With this teaching, uh, but the the preached gospel is what mm -hmm. wins it's people. What, yes, sir. The preached gospel. That's now, right. I said because those people, those white people out there, you saw the video. The white folks oh, out yeah, there, they, they were jumping, having a great time. But it's it's they walked away from there. Yeah. With the entertainment entertain. value, like we do in our churches. But I had to shut it off. You know why? Why? Because it was hitting me, brother. See? Because the song. It was hitting you. Was hitting me. Ah, la, 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 la.
Why? Believe her. Ja! I know the song. There you go. And I know the blood. There you go. And I know what the blood does, mm -hmm. and it still works. Mm -hmm. I literally had to stop playing it mm -hmm. because it was doing something on my inside. You got two types of people that was dancing there. My you got point. the one who was just having a ball, and you got the ones who knew the song. And I'm going to tell you something else I saw. I saw one of the sons of the church mm -hmm. in there excited and dancing, but I believe it was hitting home. See? See? And I saw everybody with a cell phone yep. videotaping mm -hmm. the people in the front who was performing. Mm -hmm. But brother, seriously, I had to turn that thing off because it was stirring up something in me. And I was at my own home and I, you know, I just, you understand what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that, that's where I am with that's that. And this was the first time I believe that that song ever really ministered to me. Cause sometimes mm -hmm. you hear some of these songs sure. and eh, whatever, sure. but there is a time when certain songs do hit you mm -hmm. when you may be going whatever, but it wasn't an entertainment for me. That fella hit my heart and stirred up some stuff in me. Now. So glad you brought that out. Mm -hmm. Notice I said, whenever Jesus sang, he was with his disciples. Yeah. Uh, then the Bible says, encourage one another with songs. With songs. Hymns. Spiritual songs. Spiritual songs. He didn't say encourage the world. Right. One another. One another. Uh, there was, man, there was a point. Speaking of to right. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Right there. So that singing gripped you because it was something that was that you identified with it. Yes, sir. To others, it was entertaining. Entertaining. Okay. And so they walked away with, oh, them black folk really can sing. Oh, yeah, they can sing. They really can sing. And they went to the next party. They went to the next party. And see, but that's that was the reason why I asked you that question, mm -hmm. uh, because of of the, the grip. You, in scripture, uh, in our lessons, we always talk about how when the Jews talking to other Jews, mm -hmm. they bring up Moses. Moses. Elijah. Elijah, the prophets, the prophets, okay, and so David, David, uh, Jesus brings says Isaiah, but Isaiah. we know that is okay. Mm -hmm. All right, why he brings up those names to the mm -hmm. to a Jewish audience? Because that that hits home. That hits home. But you just said that the other gospel mm -hmm. spoke to a Gentile nation, but he had to explain it. He had to explain it all. Mm -hmm. So when they got through playing that song, yes, sir, to them Gentiles, come on, that's my point. Should have explained, should have explained it. About the blood there it is. and the owner. Yes, sir. Of the and blood. the owner of the blood. That's the whole point. Yes, sir. So the Apostle Paul, when he was teaching about tongues and, and uh the Holy Spirit and uh prophecy and science, you know, when somebody come in there and they hear mm -hmm. all these tongues, they gonna think you mad. Exactly. Somebody needs to explain something. Just like Paul <laughs> said, y'all got a God for everything. Yes. He said, but I want to talk about that unknown the, God. That unknown God. That y'all got that <laughs> yeah, statue. Lord have. I want to talk about that unknown God. See? And he hit home. Yes. With that unknown God. Yeah, man. So, but, but this is I, important. I, I, I'll say something, too, because in this day and time, uh, he says in Exodus 21 and 17, he that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. And the word curse means to be evil or to speak evil of or about. Okay. Uh, Leviticus 20 and 9 says, for everyone that curses his father or his mother, notice it's always his father and his mother. It's never one or the other. Uh, everyone who curses his father or his mother shall be put to death. He hath cursed his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. Then, of course, we get to Ephesians 6 where it says two things. Obey your parents in the Lord, and that parents in the Lord is not your spiritual parents. Right. That parents in the Lord is your natural parents. Here it says to obey them. Verse 2 says to honor them. And there is a difference between honoring and obeying. But the fifth commandment is not to obey them. The fifth commandment is to honor them. Mm. So I know parents go through divorce issues. They go to all this kind of stuff. And at this point, it's when mama, who has the paternity or whatever they call it, Mama speaks against and trains the child against the father, the no, no good father. And you just taught your child, or daddy does it against the mother. You just taught your child how to dishonor. Mm -hmm. Now, that child has got to suffer, and that parent who taught it has got to suffer too. Because God said, he's, he, he didn't give us no except exemptions. Mm -hmm. 
of when. And the thing about honor, it has no age barrier. Right. So when your parents, and, and what he was alluding to, is when your parents get to a point to where they can't take care of themselves, then it's your job. When it talked about that widow indeed and Timothy, I believe it was, mm -hmm. he says, if she don't have any nephews mm -hmm. or children, mm -hmm. then let the church take care of mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. But if she has them, let them show piety at home, mm -hmm. something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Because according to God, if you got a mama and or a daddy, by the law of God, mm -hmm. you've got to honor them. There's nothing your parent can do that you can dishonor at no time. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. It's, it's, it's overtaxing to the church. Yes. It, 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 and it, it makes no sense, actually, mm -hmm. to, to, not, to not do that. Uh, you keep bringing up all kind of points, man. It just drives me crazy. And then Write I, them down. Golly. Um, that whole thing with the parents thing. I, I, I guess I got to shut it down because it was a good <laughs> point. It was a brilliant point I was about to make. Uh, thank you for bringing up the question on my post, Bronnie Scott says. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Quinlan Lane, blessings to you. Thank you. She says, I love this teaching. Uh, they break it up and explain it. <laughs> if you want to be an example, pay attention. Um, uh, that's good stuff. Uh, the um, uh, What I wanted to say is you don't have a right to just treat your children any kind of way to because you're their father. Right. The scripture was plain. Provoke not your children to wrath. To wrath. But bring them up in their admonition. Yes. And the fear of God. Because they're going to hate you mm -hmm. and it's your fault. Your fault because of the way you handle them. Because you hate And them. if they hate God because of the way you handle them, yes. that's your fault as well. That's your fault as well. There, there you go. Mm -hmm. And I, I see some parents, uh, today's Christian parents that uh, don't like the whole beating situation. And right. The whole and they're going to give an account. To they're going to give an account because oh, yeah. because they pretty much, even though we tell them that, you know, that the scripture talks about how um, folly is in the 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 heart of, the heart of a child or yeah. children, but the rod yeah. is going to chase it out of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think the word is they need mischief or something like that. Go chase them. Ask, and I pose that. That verse on wall, on the wall where somebody says, oh, we, we, don't, we don't believe in beating our kids. And right. I posed it, and they just pretty much ignored it and went back to their point. Yeah, I'm going to beat man when I go home. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, we got beat. Yes, sir. All right? And beat up. And be, yes, you know what I'm saying? But watch this. We honor our father. Yes, sir. And there are some beatings we I don't think we deserve. No. But to this day, to this day I thank him for every last we honor him. You beat your kids. Yeah, sure. I'm thinking about beating them right now. You see what I'm saying? I beat my wife. No. I've seen you beat your kids and they, yes, they ran out the house. Yes, sir. And had to come back and finish the beating. <laughs> but they love me till this day. Like you already say, whenever you... The Bible you, says if you don't beat them, you don't love them. You don't love them. You so don't the love government them. government yeah. is being led by the devil. Yes, they are. To speak against God's word. Yep. Which says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the rod of correction yes, will drive them yeah. far from it. Yeah. He yeah. said, he that spares his son, or he, or, or he that corrects not his son does not love him. No, but no. God whoops us. Now, where's yes. the law that man going to pass that God came That's the exact thing I said, because he who he loved. He chastened every he, son whom he received. Yeah, yeah he does. The uh, the the laws today on the whole beating thing. You notice the language, mm -hmm. kidnapping, mm -hmm. holding someone against their will. Right. These are the charges. Yes. Okay. And um, we get that in church every week. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we really do. Let's just lock the door. Mm -hmm. Sit down. That's kidnapping. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, there's another one. A, a child abandoned or something like that. There's something. Mm -hmm. Child abuse and all these things. That's if you just simply whip a kid with a belt, right? All right, that's that's a charge now against yes. you, right? And right. and uh, you can you can get in trouble for that today because the laws have have been we have allowed the laws to dictate how to raise our children. That's today. So let me ask you a question. Yes, which would you be uh, held accountable to? To God for not obeying His word, which said beat him, yeah. or to the judge? Who says don't beat them? Yeah. Who? Which one do you want to stand before the official judge, which is God? Because when you don't whoop them, when you don't beat them, and the Bible used the term beat them, but when you don't correct your child, like God says, your child go off and murder somebody and kill somebody and steal 
and come back, slap you in the face and say, I hate the very guts of you. Some of that is the parents' fault because they refuse to do what God says. Mm -hmm. If we do what God says, he will come to our defense. Yeah. Now, if you die, so be it. Paul said, uh, precious in the sight of the, of the Lord is the death of his saints. Mm -hmm. So if I die and rot in jail for whooping my kid, I'm still going to make it in because I did what God told me to do. Now, I'm about to sound bipolar. <laughs> There's a difference between correction and abuse. Yes, there is. All right. Although we don't know the difference because well, we seem to not know the difference. Right. Yeah. Daddy went anywhere, he found whatever in the house he could find. And and today that would be a, a abuse. <laughs> he be as with everything. Okay. Well, I, I got I only got hooked with belts. Yeah, well, we had the, the old the old irons back there. Yeah, they, they had the extension cord that detached, that detached from the iron. Michael got hooked with that. And switches are even worse because they leave some some yeah, whelps on your that. body. That's, that's something else. Okay, now t to some of y'all that is abuse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. To some of them spanking the kid is abuse. It's right. All right. So I never had to go to that extreme. Right. All right, because my children, I spoke to them and they obeyed me. Right. Because I was obeyed. Yeah, you were okay. <laughs> So I spoke. I might have whipped my child, my children, two or three times in their entire lives. Yeah, I didn't have to do it. Don't necessarily they don't. Every child yeah. don't need it. So I'm saying this because there's some people right. who are going to respond on YouTube, especially, yeah, and say, "How dare y'all promote child abuse?" No. They're going to say that, and those are the ones who probably children are locked up. <laughs> now I said it. The, the children are locked up. The kids because, are locked up on three strikes. <laughs> Children are locked up for whatever. There's yeah. some children who just decided that they're just not going to do they, what right. the parents said. Yes. But we just have, as parents, Jesus is talking about the parents as well. Yeah. We just have to make sure that we do what God says. Yeah. Now, if you enjoy whooping, you don't need to whoop. Right. Because you should never enjoy whooping. Mm -hmm. It should hurt you to whoop your child. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody came up with this time out crap and all that. I ain't got no time for that. God never said time out. <laughs> If we do it what God says do, then we'll get a godly result. Yeah. All I'm saying is parents, when the child needs correcting, and if it's a situation of a whooping, then that's what the child needs. And don't go crying to God when the child comes up the opposite because we didn't do what God says for yeah. us to do. Forget the law yeah. and forget your heart. I believe the Bible says don't even let your heart cry or go out to them when they when they're crying out to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Because my dad would say, I know y'all. Yeah. But he would still lay that strap on us. But daddy whooped us because he loved us. And daddy raised, and this is Father's Day coming up. It's funny how this lesson is dealing with father and mother on the Father's Day and talking about bringing honor. Daddy whooped us on the west side of Chicago. He told us we didn't have no friends. He said, I'm going to have to be your father and your friend. And he restricted us from doing a lot of things. Until this day, many of our friends is dead, drugged, strung out, in prison, messed up, in the Audi home, if they still got it, or whatever the case may be. But out of my dad's seven sons, five of them are in ministry, or six of them are in ministry, and four of them are ordained elders right to this day. His daughters are leading singers in the church, all because he did what God told us. He loved us, and he whooped us, but he still loved us, and he whooped us because he loved us. And I know it hurt him, but he still had to do it, and God blessed him. Yeah, we we, we felt like it. We felt like dying, but we, we wish we did. We died. again. We <laughs> again, this don't apply to all y'all's children. Some of y'all's children are great kids who don't <laughs> give you a day's problem. So don't be talking about some. I gotta whoop you because they was riding drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta whoop you. Right, Bring no, it up my auntie's house. Don't she do it. Don't them. do it. If you if if you <laughs> if you got successful children today and they have been model citizens and you didn't whoop them, you did a great job not having to whoop them because the Lord blessed you. But you didn't. You wasn't raised on Albany Avenue <laughs> and around uh, Ohio. Oh yes, sir. <clears throat> you weren't raised over there, so that, thank God for your kids. They escape uh, terror. Sir Walter Jones show. Yeah, hit the share button if you can. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hit the bell if you on uh, YouTube. Sir Walter Jones show.